After a crushing, dominating 7-0 win against Colorado on Saturday, the Jets are now just one point out of the home ice advantage in round one of the 2024 playoffs. You're locked on the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, friends, and welcome to tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. Thanks for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on all of your favorite podcasting platforms and YouTube. Doing so, of course, is always free of charge and ensures you never miss another episode. Most of all, though, we just love and appreciate your support. Tonight's episode, like I said, we've got some fun stuff to talk about, including an absolute thrashing of the Colorado Avalanche on the road, 7-0, big Jets victory. You all saw it yesterday, or at least I hope you did. Uh, If you didn't, you missed a heck of a game, and it was an absolutely wild time. What a crazy game. Fastest set, uh, set of two goals scored in Jets franchise history, just 10 seconds apart. I mean, you can't even make this stuff up. It was a demolition. Uh, Georgiev was chased. And, you know, the, the vibes couldn't possibly be better because it follows a big dominating win against the Dallas Stars, where the Jets kind of had a very similar formula. Now, I'll say the game against the Avs, it was not a hundred percent perfect, but we never ask for perfection, right? You want to just get as close to it as you can. All that said, maybe one or two small things to keep an eye on as we head into the postseason. Uh, You know, some of the same kinds of trends and themes. So, you know, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But before we go any further, just wanted to let you know that tonight's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Now, like I said, the Jets. They absolutely curb stomped uh, the the Avs. To to put it in crass terms, they kind of beat the piss out of them. And I've never really seen the Jets do this to Colorado, where pretty much every single thing that the Avs rely on, which is speed and skill, were completely neutralized for most of the game, right? It wasn't until the Jets had already put up seven at that point, you know, Colorado was allowed to try and make a push towards the end of the game just to not get shut out, and it still didn't matter. Uh, Connor Hellebuck was great in net. The Jets were generally very stingy, and even on the few really dangerous chances that the Avs may or uh, were able to create, the Jets stood tall and still got the job done. You saw lots of commitment from guys who, you know, occasionally would commit a turnover, but then basically lay out and try and block the shot. I'm looking at Nikolai Ehlers, who had a really bad one, and then he uh, kind of atoned for it by basically using his body as a meat shield. Lord, that must have hurt. Uh, we saw Shifley really hustle back on a number of back checks, even though he didn't record any points. Uh, Kyle Connor tried to really man mark and be a huge pest. I think he even forced a turnover or something at one point, so big props to him. Um, <clears throat> this just felt like overall a game where the Jets wanted to prove that they are capable of playing at a level that, you know, Bones expects from them and that we expect from them. Uh, this follows a really strong performance against the Dallas Stars, where the Jets basically shut Dallas's entire transition game down. And Winnipeg kind of had a similar approach here. Uh, I, I do have a, a few minutes to talk about um, this formula for victory, right? Because I think it's going to be very useful to consider over the next few weeks. Winnipeg is going to face a lot of teams in the West that are built like this, uh, because honestly, the West is the best conference in the league right now, and I don't think it's all that close. No disrespect to the Eastern teams, but when you look at squads that generally terrify me, it's really all in the West. Dallas, Colorado, Vegas, These are the teams that have traditionally been Winnipeg's boogeyman, and in the last couple of weeks, the Jets have beaten all of them. The only team that really gave them huge fits recently was Nashville, and that was just a weird game, right? The Jets in general were just bad, and they still managed to squeak out a win. So uh, take it for what it's worth, a big couple of points that the Jets have gotten over the last few games, and with Winnipeg really closing down the gap for home ice advantage, Every win that they've secured in the six-game winning streak has been critical and crucial. Um, And if you're talking about rounding into the right form at the exact moment, that's really crucial and really helpful for Winnipeg to uh, not only secure a playoff seed, but also kind of get ready for the postseason. This was it. And everyone really had a hand in this game against Colorado. We saw, 
Ehlers have, you know, some really nice plays. Velarde had uh, a goal or so. <clears throat> um, we saw Adam Lowry get a couple. It was just a great performance all around. And I think, you know, when you look back at everyone really stepping up to the plate and having big performances, this was a game where I was really impressed, right? Uh, Tyler Toffoli bagged one. Of course, he hadn't scored too much recently, but has been notching a couple of assists here and there. Gustafson, uh, who has really filled in beautifully for Nino Niederreiter, had a dominant performance. Sean Monaghan had himself a quiet three-point game. Um, Sean, I think, has really proven to be one of the better trade deadline acquisitions the Jets have picked up. I know that, you know, when we were talking originally about his acquisition, there was some concern about the opportunity cost of bringing him in, right? A first rounder, which at the time looked a little bit expensive. And that that wasn't, you know, false, right? A, a first rounder for a player like Monaghan, it's not cheap. Monaghan's career was basically resuscitated by the Habs. And you kind of looked at, looked at the inflated shooting percentage and everything and thought, well, you know, is it really sustainable? Is it going to come crashing down if he goes elsewhere? You know, is he really going to be the kind of guy who is actually worth that price? And I think, you know, obviously hindsight is twenty twenty, but in, in Winnipeg's perspective, they basically got a steal for him. He's been one of the best uh, trade deadline rental performers so far. He's notched a, a ton of points for the Jets. He's been really good at just being a really capable finisher and also setup man. And look, he has a couple of things that he doesn't do as well. Like his defensive work is kind of suspect, and you can tell that the foot speed for him is a bit of a problem, but he's actually made some really nice PK plays, and I feel like in general, right? Uh, you just can't complain about his performance. He's actually playing at a level to where I wouldn't be shocked if the Jets and his agent try and find some sort of a meeting down the middle here. I, I'm kind of like on the fence about resigning him. I like him a lot. I don't know if I love his style of play, especially if the Jets want to get faster going forward. But by the same token, if the if the deal is like a three-year deal for like four and a half million or something, uh, which was <clears throat> what one of our followers on Twitter suggested, I would not hate that. In fact, I'd be pretty okay with a deal like that. I think it's a nice stopgap sort of solution. Uh, it's a contract that you can move after the next couple of seasons. Really wouldn't be too much to worry about. So if Winnipeg is liking his role in the middle six and he continues to perform at the level that he has, you know, I'm not really going to complain about him returning. But like I said, kind of stuff for the future. Let's just see how, for now, uh, he fits into the playoff picture. I really want to see if this team is capable of repeating the success in like a seven-game series because against a couple of really good opponents, they've definitely held up their end of the bargain. Things may change a little bit when you face the same team uh, in, a, in a series like this. But overall, though, you know, it feels like Winnipeg is starting to peak at just the right time. Now, I did say that there was one thing that I probably didn't love. Uh, the top line kind of got outmatched a little bit at times, which you sort of expect against McKinnon because it's Nathan McKinnon. He outmatches everyone. And there were some moments where you could see the, the top line getting hemmed in defensively. It's nothing new. The good news is, is that when the Jets did have this happen, they didn't really give up too many high danger chances. Uh, it did it did limit at times some of Winnipeg's uh, offensive prowess on that line, but overall, you know, they still had a couple of really dangerous chances. I think back to a, a you know, great um, Mark Shifley breakaway that I thought was going to be a goal. Somehow just barely saved. Uh, Shifley just could not quite get the handle. But even when they spent an extended D zone shift, they were able to create that jailbreak moment up the middle. So, you know, despite my reservations, there's still some stuff to be positive about. And uh, so long as the rest of the team plays like it did, uh, in this game, you really aren't going to be too, too worried about the top line being maybe a bit of a risk. But like, as you can guess, right, you're, you're hearing me talk about this stuff and I'm, I'm being very nitpicky. This is really a nitpicky thing. I think if, if Winnipeg continues to perform at this level, we're not going to have to worry too much about the top line spending uh, any extended D zone shifts because the rest of the team might be able to more than double or match their performance. So a lot to be excited about from this game. A big, big victory, uh, really cr crucial in securing home ice advantage here in a couple of games. And we'll talk about, <clears throat> you know, whether how the Jets have played against Dallas and Colorado is a replicable template for success and whether the Jets should make any adjustments heading into the playoffs as it starts at the end of this week. But before we go too much further, I do want to shout out our friends and partners at Indeed. When you're drafting your fantasy team, do you ever wish you could handpick the best stars for your business team? 
If you're building your roster, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all with Indeed. They offer powerful hiring tools like matching, assessments, and virtual interviews to make it as seamless and uncomplicated as possible. If you hate waiting, Indeed U.S. data shows that over 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job requirements the moment they sponsor a job. As somebody who has personally used Indeed to find work, I can personally attest to how easy it is, very comprehensive, very convenient, and for those of you looking to hire, I highly recommend it. I think you'll have a ton of great applicants, and Indeed also knows that, you know, you, you can't really afford to waste money, especially when you're growing your own business. You have to make every dollar count, so that's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. If you're ready to get started, visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring right now. That's Indeed.com slash locked on. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing is not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for rejoining us on today's episode as we are uh, talking about some big takeaways from Winnipeg's victories, not only against the Colorado Avalanche, but also the Stars, because I think there's a pattern that's developing here, uh, which is a really good pattern right in time for the playoffs. I think we've all been kind of waiting for the Jets to uh, flip the switch, and I think they have more than done that in the last few games. Before we talk about this template for success and what the Jets need to do to keep it up, just wanted to let you know something really cool the Locked On Network is doing. If you are a Fox Sports or ESPN watcher and you find yourself having to turn down the volume because everyone keeps shouting all the time, you should make the switch to Locked On Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Again, subscribe to Locked On Sports Today, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, like I said, uh, the Jets, <laughs> wow. Uh, if you want to talk about instilling confidence ahead of the playoffs and making a huge statement and really getting the fan base back and engaged, this was a sequence of games that I think for me was... Probably the most heartening I've seen in a while. Not that, you know, I, I didn't didn't like the games where Connor Shifley and Vill or Ehler Shifley and Villardi played together. Those were great, right? Uh, and I think there were some really strong performances there. But I think in, in particular, stylistically, in the last couple of games, uh, I think these are more line independent. I think it's just more the players really stepping up and adhering to what Bones wants. But against Dallas and um <clears throat> and uh, uh Colorado. Winnipeg basically made the neutral zone hell for opponents. This is traditionally an area where the Jets haven't always uh, been as, as great, but this season when Bones really had them aggressively charging the blue line and essentially shutting down that transition game, it made a lot of the speed and skill that defines both of those teams irrelevant. And I'm not going to sit here and say that like Dallas is the fastest team, but you saw how Colorado played. You saw how up-tempo they can be and how much that team relies on really uh, rapid north-south counters and then a lot of east-west puck movement. The Jets basically shut that down and did not allow <clears throat> uh, Colorado time to really set up, which led to you know individual efforts really having to drive this performance. You, know, you had to see uh, Kale McCarr and Nathan McKinnon and guys like that really try to uh, beat the Jets one-on-one. -on -one. And it didn't really lead to much. Even when the Avs did create some good scoring chances, you know, the rest of the Jets either blocked shots, Connor Hellebuck did the rest, or uh, just in general, there weren't really many opportunities that finally made it to uh, the man in net. So the Jets, I thought, played a very complete game. This was a super impressive performance. And honestly, the Jets probably could have had more goals. If I'm being, uh, you know, crazy serious about this, I feel like the Jets had a couple of near misses and stuff where they were inches away from adding even more goals. And it, it's just a really impressive performance. And I also think you're looking at this in the first round perspective, right? You know, you have uh, Georgiev or Ananen in net, which if you're an Avs fan, you are probably pooping yourself right about now because neither of those guys looked pretty good. Uh, I, I know that like neither was necessarily responsible for what happened in these games. And I would say Georgiev, 
you know, he had one bad goal against Josh Morrissey that I think probably he would like to have back, but the rest of the goals, there wasn't a ton for him to uh, really make a play on. So Winnipeg just dissected Colorado's defense and their structure and really played a surgical game. And I think if you're looking at, you know, a, a template for success against this team, slow them down, take away their skating legs. And the fact that they did it at uh, Ball Arena, I think was the most impressive part. Like I said, look at the splits um, on the year for the Avs at home. They are almost unbeatable there. Uh, there's not really many teams that have a more clear home ice advantage than the Avs do. That Rocky Mountain air is really thin. It is tough to play in that arena that's boisterous and loud, and the Avs play a heck of a game, and yet the Jets basically made them look like a peewee team. I don't say that often about opponents, but that is what the Jets did. It was a huge statement win, and ahead of uh, you know the playoffs really starting at the end of this week, I think it was a, a confidence booster and really a shot across the bow that warned the Avs, Winnipeg is finally here. Uh, this team looks a lot more like what we saw from the early half of the season where they pressured time and space. They did not allow the opponents to have room to move. And when uh, there were mistakes from opponents, the Jets were usually quick to counter off of them. And I'm not going to say that the Jets played the perfect game. There were some errant passes and stuff that I think the team probably wouldn't love if looking back at the footage. But on the whole, right, this was a super encouraging game. And I think the Jets have a template for uh, how to potentially beat like this Avs team. And like I said, playing home at, you know, uh, Canada Life Center first, I think is a huge, huge advantage, more so than other series because the Avs have such a stark um, home and away split. On the road, the Avs are pretty average, but at home, again, like I said, they're almost unbeatable. I think the Jets could probably walk into Ball Arena and steal at least one game on the road, but I don't know about two. So, Having, you know, home ice advantage first to potentially get a couple of wins already, that is a thing that you really can't overstate. And uh, it's, it's really awesome that the Jets only need a point or a, a I think, an abs loss of any kind in the next game or so. That should be enough. And with the Jets welcoming uh, the Seattle Kraken in this week on Tuesday, I think Winnipeg is going to have that home ice clinched by that date. So a lot of really exciting stuff for the Jets. Uh, you have a formula that seems to work. You have players who appear to be bought in. And I really like the leadership that we've seen from our captain. Adam Lowry, I feel like, has been on a bit of a warpath the past couple of weeks. Um, really, this whole season from him has just been great, right? That line has sort of been the do-it-all for Bones. But I really feel like now he's just a, a, a matchup nightmare. And I feel like he's really played a pivotal role on this team I know that in the past we used to worry about him playing too much, but I feel like with how he's played this year, it's actually not that much of a problem. And seemingly with David Gustafson, they're really starting to gel there to the point where I I, I really wonder if uh, Nino's ready to come back, where you slot him into the lineup. I wouldn't mind having him maybe uh, take the other wing. I don't know if Gustafson has ever played at right wing or if, if Nino has. Um, I, I would actually like that. I think that trio, Gustafson, Lowry and Niederreiter could be absolutely lethal. You can push Appleton to the fourth line where he can be an elite shutdown winger. So again, there's just a lot to really like. And I, I feel like this team has so many options and so much flexibility to where you could basically use these guys in almost any role. And I think for the most part, they would really thrive. My guess is that they'll probably go back to Nino, Lowry and Appleton. You know, if you don't have to uh, bust up a good thing, you know, don't, I guess. I just want to make sure that... <clears throat> A couple of these guys who I think have really earned longer term roles with this team uh, actually get the ice time to go with it. So a lot to like, a lot to be excited about. And with all of that excitement, I did want to talk about packing the house this week. I really think it's actually worth sending a signal, especially in these final home games, that, you know, the fans are bought in and ready to go. I think the playoff tickets have already been flying like hot cakes. It feels like the fans are really bought in. And it's nice that you know, when the team does well, I, I think it's worth celebrating and really going in person when you can. Not that everyone should. Um, for a lot of folks, this is an expensive venture, and I definitely wouldn't wouldn't encourage, you know, people going broke or anything. But if you have the means and you're able to go out and support the team and it's not too much of a strain on your schedule, I thought this week the team could really use that extra boost. Uh, you know, the team has come a long way this year. I think the players have really bought in. And it'd be nice if the fans can kind of give that back and show uh, that they're really ready for the postseason. So 
We'll talk about the importance of being loud and proud here in uh, Canada Life Center in a couple of days. But before we close out for tonight's episode, just wanted to shout out our friends and partners at Game Time. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting, getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. As somebody who has actually used a lot of ticket services to buy, say, Orioles tickets, it's nice to know that Game Time actually gives you, you know, last minute ticket sales and zone deals, which for a lot of you, you probably really would take advantage of if you could go to, say, Jets games or maybe even Jays games. Or maybe you're into NFL tickets. They've got them all. And they also offer some extra cool things that I think a lot of other ticket vendors don't. They've got in-venue seat views, all in prices that are not a big shocker. And, of course, they come back with their lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, and so much more. If you are so tired of all of the games being played, not on the ice, but in terms of your ticket sales and ticket fees, I really uh, think you know game time could be the service for you. I highly recommend them. I've used them before myself. And if you want to take the guesswork out of buying tickets, just go with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and be sure to use promo code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Again, terms apply. Create an account, redeem code L O C K E D O N N H L for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Hello, friends, and welcome back to these closing thoughts on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for joining us on tonight's episode as we are just wrapping up some final thoughts, uh, really about getting excited about the playoffs and kind of rewarding the team with some sellouts. I think this is one of those times when, you know, for a, a really strong season that the Jets have had both in the front office and on the ice, it's important to send the message that, the fans are happy with the product, and I think fans really should be happy with this team. You know, aside from a couple of blips here and there, uh, especially, you know, the, the losing streak prior to this, I feel like this team really does deserve the support heading into the postseason, which I haven't always said in the past. You know, I always say vote with your wallet, but given how good this team is this year and how much they've been a blast to watch and generally follow throughout the entire season, it'd be nice if the last couple of games before the playoffs were sellouts. I know they're like midweek games, and a lot of people don't always go to those, uh, especially because the playoffs are clinched. We're about to clinch home ice advantage and all that, right? But, you know, the guys probably could use that little bit of a boost. Uh, I know the playoffs are going to be absolutely crazy. I get the sense that we might see a huge turnout for the street parties and stuff. It really feels like um, Winnipeg is sort of marching back towards that 2017-2018 vibe. Uh, 50 wins already on the season. Massive year from the Jets. 106 points already, uh, you know, if you're looking for some sort of moral boost, right, or or morale boost, not moral boost, morale boost, uh, or a confidence building thing, the last few weeks of Jets hockey have probably been the exact shot in the arm this fan base needs. And so now it's time to pack the house, cheer the team on, and get excited. And I know that sounds very propaganda-y, but I really feel like when the team does well, it's important to encourage that, right, because it leads to you know, well, the Jets recognizing that this stuff works and that they should keep doing it, right? The fan engagement on their social media account has been A plus this year. Uh, I've really felt like they've connected well, even just doing small acknowledgements and stuff. Um, these are details that in past years they didn't really have. You know, the Jets social media team, no offense, used to be pretty boring and not that exciting. Now they're really jumping into the memes and stuff. They're in integrating fan culture, including like Sack Squirtle. And I know it sounds silly. But to see that level of attention and care paid to um, the environment in which the Jets play, I think is really cool. It involves the fans in a way that they haven't always done before. There's a stronger connection to the local community. And I just feel like in terms of the vibes around this team, this is definitely the vibiest Jets we've had in a long time. And I know we said that last year, but I really feel like it holds even truer this season. And, you know, with the last couple of games on the docket before we face Colorado, Let's see if we can maybe pack the house and get the, the the fans really roaring. I think it's time to make Canada Life Center really scary again. It's been a place that's kind of been a bit of a mausoleum by our old standards. You know, we used to see games where the decibel levels were basically ear splitting by MTS standards. 
And it's it's nice that we might be able to get back to that. I think it's time. I think we've long been overdue for a really raucous crowd. And if there was a year where the Jets really feel like they might have a shot at getting it all, this is probably one of them. Uh, I know that there will be other times where the Jets will have big cup runs, but it's not going to be probably next season, if I'm being honest. I think this year, um, this kind of feels like it, right? With this core, with this group, it feels like this is the year. We're going to have new groups that are going to push here uh, for, for similar levels of playoff success over the next few years. But in terms of this core group, I feel like this is the big enchilada. And so let's hope that at the end of it, there is a big trophy awaiting us. I am expecting a deep playoff run. I just hope that we actually get it because it's been far too long since we've been able to really cheer about super exciting Jets playoff hockey. But let me know how you're feeling about the playoff run ahead. Are you excited? Are you looking forward to it? Are you planning to go to any of the games this week? Drop your comments uh, below or at my social medias at HL Living Loco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. On our next episode, we'll probably talk about the last couple of games here coming up for the Jets, some preview action, some thoughts ahead of the playoffs, all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, man, I'm I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. It's been not all that often that I can say that about the Jets playoffs, but I am, I'm feeling it, right? I'm bought in. I hope you are too. But for tonight's episode, that is going to be all the time that we have. Thank you so much for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. We'll see you back here tomorrow, so don't go anywhere. Have a great night, and as always, go Jets go.